Truck Talk Media. C10 Talk, episode 263. Phil Cato from Cato's Custom Upholstery. This did not disappoint. Here we go. What would you say, like, like Boogie Nights, what does a custom interior cost and and the time? So so when somebody's out there building a truck and they're like, OK, I don't I want to budget the time and I want to budget the money ballpark yep. it. I don't know, probably twenty five and three weeks. That's like okay. top of the line, everything. And when you break that down into cost of what we're buying on our side right almost half of that is materials damn son seeing is believing and our title sponsor united pacific makes seeing a whole lot easier the crispness of the united pacific led headlights taillights marker lights and more makes seeing and showing your truck that much better it's time to upgrade your old dim halogens for new led headlights Tail lights and more. They offer the brightest and latest LED technology. Headlights are available up to 1600 lumens, easy to install, and it fits right in the OEM housing. How about upgrading to sequential tail lights? They're DOT approved and ready to ship today. And for you 73 to 80 GMC and Chevy square body guys, they've got the new front parking lights LED with stainless steel bezel. Think UP Car Parts. That's upcarparts.com. Let me tell you what Melba's Post is packing right here. I've right? got 411 Posi Track out back, 750 double pumper, Edelbrock intake, scored over 30, 11 to 1 pop up pistons, turbo jet, 390 horsepower. We're talking some bucking muscle. What does that do? Does that blow your mind? That just happened. Welcome to C10 Talk. Your C10 Truck Podcast. And now I have a chance to be the best. Maybe the best in the world. My old man is a television repairman. Got the ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. I said I got 50 cents in that juice box, and all I can hear is your mouth flap. Did you hear that? Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. Here we go, here we go. What is up, C10 Nation? Coming at you, 263, Cato's Custom Upholstery, Mr. Phil Cato, also known as Cato. So, like I said, this was a good one. Um, love hanging out with Cato. Good dude. Love the vibe, energy, passion. So I think you guys will dig this one. You might not necessarily know the name. You might know the face, whether it's Iron Resurrection, whether it's Bitchin' Rides. He's been there. He's done a lot of really cool high-end vehicles, including his truck, which I'm a big fan of, Boogie Nights. Uh, rad, rad ride. So uh, SEMA 2022 debuted that, and uh, it was a hit. So we, of course, are going to talk about his truck, and uh, we're going to talk about upholstery. We're going to talk about the scene. We're going to talk about him and a lot of other really fun stuff. Okay, so enjoy episode 263. You might be traveling to a show and uh, we hope you tune in and we do appreciate it. I just want to say I hope everybody had a really good Father's Day. Uh, I did. I was able to be off work and hang out with the kids and mama. So uh, it was awesome. So I hope you as well had a great Father's Day. We did have a huge sale. Thank you so much for partaking. I marked everything down. Everything. Um, just trying to liquidate some stuff up here in the studio. So thank you if you were able to get some stickers, some banners, some hats, shirts, sweatshirts, uh, everything that we have. It was marked down. So again, thank you. All right. So this weekend, C10 Nationals, the first debut, if you will, in Salt Lake City. So uh, they've got the Tennessee and the Texas one. And now they're in Utah. That is this weekend. Cato and I allude to that a few times because he's up there in Utah. So if you're going to the C10 Nationals in Utah, I know Oro and the crew, uh, they're going. So biggie, 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 Mr. Uh, biggie Bash. So it looks like it's going to be a good time up there in Salt Lake. If you're going, if you're traveling, 
safe travels, and we wish you uh, nothing but success and have a great time up in Salt Lake. After that, we will be headed to the Slowdown in San Luis Obispo. That is August 5th. So we'll be heading to the Slowdown. August 12th, C-10s on the Capitol, Olympia, Washington. Man, I'd love to get up to that one. Uh, Check that off. We'll see August 12th in Washington, all you Pacific Northwesters. I'm going to say this is the fourth year it might even be their fifth crazy jen and todd manchester c10s on the capitol september 3rd is going to be the intervention so they do that that's on the third and yes so saturday night is the second the show's on the third and then that's labor day weekend so intervention up car parts puts that on light up the night and then september 3rd is the show and uh, it's going to be another banger for sure. September 16th, the one, the only, Waxahachie, Texas. C10's in the park. Probably close to my favorite show. Obviously, the reunion, the get down, they're in my backyard. But uh, my favorite out-of-state show is definitely C10's in the park. Love what they do. Party on the square. Terry, the mayor himself. And uh, Mark, they just, it's, it's just a great time. So that is September 16th. All right. So some shows to uh, go to and a lot going on at all times. We appreciate you tuning in. Again, this was a really good time. I, uh, I dig Cato and what he does, what he represents. So hope you guys enjoy the show. If you're traveling this weekend, again, safe travels. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Have a great week. Late. All right, all right. What up, C10 Nation? We are back. Philly C, Phil Cato, Cato's Custom Upholstery. He's hot. He's ready to rock. We're going to talk boogie nights. We're going to talk interior. We're going to talk about parts. We're going to talk about life. So, uh, Phil Cato, Cato, thanks for taking time to, uh, yeah, thanks thanks for taking time to hang with us. Yeah, it's the middle of the day uh, on, uh, on Juneteenth, baby. So That's everybody right. knows when we recorded this. How's that? Ha- Happy Juneteenth to everybody out there. We're uh, yeah. Monday and we're just hanging. So uh, I think I might try to get this out tomorrow. I like to put them out on Tuesday. So we'll see what uh, we'll see how smooth this goes today. But uh, yeah, right. welcome, welcome, uh, long time, uh, long time here. So I, he's, he, I kind of was just telling him, I'm all if I could grow my facial hair. Uh, if it wasn't for work, I might be looking at my 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 brother from another mother. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to get a, a SQRBY hat on here and. Uh... You know, rocking. I don't even know what gear. I got. Oh, I got my old school pro on right now. I got, yeah. I got, a, I'm rocking that one out. Yeah. He changed the logo though. So I got, uh, I got to keep this one now. I got to make sure that, uh, that uh, I, I hold on to this, the old style, old style logo now. Yeah. It's dope. Pro I like performance. it. Performance. Yeah. Yeah. They should have never so, changed it, but whatever. Right. I know, man. It's always something. It's funny. I kind of like the new one. And somebody told me, they go, oh, man, I really like the old one. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. Freshen things up. He's been in business for 10 years. So uh, I guess every 10 years, you got to freshen it up. Dang, I'm like three years behind. So I better freshen my logo up. Yeah, freshen it up. Freshen it up. Uh, little picture know. little picture of you on there. And uh, I guess you could do boogie nights if you really wanted to. I could do boogie nights. But Rick, uh, you know, is doing the, the boogie nights for his gear. He sells at all the shows. So I kind of, I just leave it to him. I'm like, yeah, Rick wants to do it. And that's yeah. what he does. And uh, eventually, I think I'll let it float out a little bit longer and then i'll have some you know to for sale because i do like it it's a rad shirt so yeah yeah so for the audience that's uh square body s q r b d y rick cheeseman and they've got a, a boogie night shirts it's pretty rad so obviously he had a part in some of those uh, graphics that you had at sema so let's jump in who is kato who what's what's your story well mama leo i like long walks Ooh, on the feet nice <laughs> nice you don't seem like a Leo. You're pretty passive. I think Leos are pretty ornery, but uh... yeah, no, I'm very passive. I'm not much of an argumentative person. Ask my wife. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just me. I, I don't. What do you want me to say? Well, you grew up where you grew up in Atlanta. Oh no, God no! I grew up in in little town in Paris, Texas. That's where I'm from. Uh, building cars and stuff with my dad. My mom raced cars. Uh, her first race car I remember was a '56 wagon panel wagon which we can come back to because she just got it back and then she had a 55 bel air two to her post and then she had a 69 amx so she got the panel back a few years ago and my dad and i've got all of her speed and chassis building the chassis and motor for it right now in atlanta and then she still has the amx that's rocking like a 400 small block and stuff and it's more street worthy than um more of a 
a race car these days, but it's still a killer car. So that's kind of what I did. And, you know, grew up going to car shows all the time. I remember the tweed phase with everything. I hated it then. I remember all the bright colors in the 90s. I hated it then. Um, all the billet wheels. Sorry, fellas, but I hated it then. So I think it, it has its place. But on hot rods, I was kind of like, Meh. you know, mini trucks, stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, it's it's perfect. I mean, that was some badass stuff. Can we say ass on this show? You can say whatever you want. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I was badass then. So yeah, badass. You could say that was fucking ridiculous. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I don't want to piss my mom off by cussing. She'd be like, you know, she she'd be like, you know, Philip Earl, people at church are listening to this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah mom. And I they know. go to church so that they can repent for you. And you're, you're right. Exactly. Th thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Yes. <laughs> mom, I'm always going to need at least three to four Hail Marys, whatever, our fathers, whatever it takes, right. because you know that I'm going to drop a few F bombs and some ass bombs and and I, I can't she'll still man i'll go home on vacation i'll say a cuss or she'll come up behind me Fuck, i'm 42 years old she still smacks me i'm like mom like i'm not a little boy anymore she's like i don't care you know better than that. i raised you better than that boy that's right you're still my son and she's a race car driver so was your dad yeah. was he um was this a hobby wrenching or was this a shop wrenching that you no, kind of grew up in just a hobby man we always grew up with old cars we probably had 10 or 12 old cars like my whole life we always did stuff. Uh, and so this is just kind of a family thing. So I never knew anything else. Like from the time I was, I don't know how old I was, like 12 or 14, we, my brother and I started a lawn mowing business and we needed a trailer to haul a lawnmower. And we're like, well, we're not going to buy one. We're going to build it. So my dad taught us how to weld and how to build this trailer. He still to this day. And I mean, that was it was a long time ago. So, and then when I was, I think I was my first motor with my dad. And then, you know, like I said, with mom racing, we were always at the racetrack every weekend, all over, you know, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, running cars. So it was just kind of the thing we did. And I knew when I was in middle school, I was like, well, I'm going to work on cars. What I was going to do, I didn't know. But when I was, I think 16 or 15, I had my 55 Chevy big window step side truck, which I still have. My bottom one was 14. I was second owner of it. Right. And so I needed to get the seat done. And I think we were mowing lawns and I was working at like a snow cone stand or something. And, and the guy was like, yeah, that's like, I think it was like 350 bucks for the seat. And I'm like, dang, that guy makes 350 bucks in like three days. It takes me two or three weeks to make that kind of you know, just young kids. And I remember that, but it didn't click, you know, like why I'm doing upholstery now. That's not the reason, but I definitely remember it as one of those things in my life. Where I was like, damn, this guy's a tradesman. He's getting paid more than mechanics. He's getting paid, you know, more than fabricators. And it's only taking him a few days to do it. Drop it off on Monday, pick it up on Wednesday type thing. And I kind of sparked my attention then, but not the reason you know why i'm doing it now that makes sense yeah yeah i mean uh at least you figured it out you're like hey i'm working my ass off you know it's like uh do i want to mow yards do i want to dig ditches or do i want to get a trade and become a you know a master interior upholstery man exactly and i think then you know tradesmen they weren't really glorified but they weren't frowned upon in texas by no means um you know because you have so many craftsmen craftswomen there that are so talented and so it was kind of like, oh, yeah, you can do that or you could be a mechanic or you could be a plumber or, you know, a house construction, you know, person or whatever you want to do. And it, it, it was never frowned upon. And then, you know, kind of that time frame after that, you know, things were frowned upon and everybody, you have to go to college to do this. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. No, you don't, because my wife's a doctor and I'm not going to say I make much as her, but we do all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. Well, and, and now I, we're figuring that out, right? Where we're seeing that in society that uh, these kids are figuring out that college thing might not be all what it's cracked up to be, you know, and then you can go get a skill, whether that's HVAC, you can run a construction company. I know a lot of people who don't have a four-year degree make way over, you know, way, oh, way yeah. over $500,000 a year. Absolutely. And I, I think that too, if you're a skilled craze craftsman or woman nowadays, 
you can pretty much name your price on what you want because there's so far of you between that are just worth a shit. So if you're listening and you're thinking about going into this field or anything else, hey, go into it. Don't be afraid. Trust me, a little hard work pays off in a relatively short amount of time these days. Well, and again, master your craft, right? So once you master your craft and you become such a high level person, you'll be in demand and uh, you'll have a year long waiting list before you know it. And we need people, we need craftsmen, whether it's in automotive, whether that's in, you know, uh, construction, uh, you know, there's so many different things. We need people to do that kind of work. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think that people don't need to be afraid to get their hands dirty because I was out replacing a fuel pump yesterday and chasing wires all day and it was good that i i still have a mechanical background being a mechanic in the air force and things like that and then growing up doing it do i really like to do it no it kills my back because i'm old and uh that was kind of why you know i went into upholstery work but um i think it was just it just is what it is you know so you're a young kid in Paris, Texas. You grow up wrenching. You grow up rotting. Mm-hmm. Um, mom's racing cars. Dad's fixing them on the weekends. You're mowing yards. You're hustling. You're obviously your dad instilled somebody. Your parents both instilled a, a work ethic for you and your brother. At what point did you know you're going to go in the Air Force? Did you get out of high school and be like, hey, uh, you know, we don't have the money to go to college or I don't really care. I just want to do something. And you signed up. And next thing you know, you're in the Air Force. Yeah. So it's kind of a jacked up story i always wanted to join the service my dad was in the navy my uncle's in the navy both my grandfathers were in world war ii type thing um but in high school i got my girlfriend pregnant and so um she was a year older than me I like the motor ladies Woo-hoo. yeah 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 you know what i'm saying but uh anyway uh so made up i was like well she's got to go to college i need to to do something to make money and then of course, you know, getting a military and then, you know, she finds some other dude and that's the end of the story on that, which is fine because it worked out for the better. And, you know, a few years later, you know, I, you know, I met my wife now. We've been married almost 18 years. So, but meant to be. Yeah, exactly. So I think each negative or positive stepping stone in your life always leads to hopefully success. And if you, you know, stay positive minded and try not to get down because there's definitely going to be those, you know, obviously getting divorced and, you know, losing your high school sweetheart and stuff like that. It wasn't easy. And then find out she cheats on you. I mean, just like life experiences here. I know I'm going pretty deep, but it's like, I, I just, it was definitely depressing, but also I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let this run my life. And it's also the saying is like failure will lead to success. And I'm a firm believer in that um, failure is not necessarily a failure. Failure is just a learning curve. And I don't mind failing because there's still so many things, even in the automotive industry, especially the upholstery side that I'm trying to learn to this day, you know, and people, you know, like, oh, we look up to you. And I'm like, bro, I look up to you, you know, like you guys are awesome. I'm still trying to learn. And uh, I think that's what keeps you, um, you know, motivated and still not getting burnt out in the craft because, it's like, even a few years ago, CAD wasn't really available to us, you know, where we could really dive into it and understand it. And then as time comes on, you know, it makes it easier, the computer assisted drawing and stuff. And that really pertains to a ton of stuff in our industry now. And so I just taught myself CAD, uh, along with Adam and some other big shot names in the automotive industry that, you know, I, I learned from and I'm still learning from. And I think that's what keeps it definitely that that fire burning and and keeps that interesting to just keep going because sometimes like you with being a fireman i'm sure there's times you're just like man i can't take another you know another wreck or another body you've got to pull out of a fire i mean these are really negative things that will affect you forever my brother was a fireman for 20 years i know what that takes or being in the military you know same thing there it's just trying to stay positive and, and keep those thoughts out of your head and always stay busy to keep keep you keep you going yeah i think there's a lot of rambling there but no no because i think a lot of people can resonate with that you know and and especially when you um get over 40 um you 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 know and again i like you said your brother was in 20 years you were in the service i've got you know almost shoot almost 30 years in public safety and and uh yeah it's it it starts to wear you out a little bit, you know, people, people will wear people out, you know, that's where there's reason why the, uh, the old bumper sticker, it says, uh, the more, uh, the more I'm around people, the more I like my dog, 
because people yeah. just they'll people, wear each other they'll wear yeah, each other they out suck, man people yeah. really suck sometimes and i i really like every time i meet you right you're always so positive and energetic man that's why i really gravitate towards you and love hanging out with you and i think that if more people were that way it would it would just be better, especially in our world, in the truck scene or the car scene or the Ford truck scene or whatever you're into. It's like always be the light that people want to gravitate to. You yeah. know, don't don't be that negative Nancy. And well, sometimes, sometimes people I'm glad you say that because sometimes people might be like, dude, that guy wears me out. So sometimes, you know, you can be a, a little too positive for some people, but that's OK, because most of the time no. people will be like. All right, here comes this guy with his mic in his hand. And then and then uh, I, I've got a couple of great stories where these, you know, people are go to truck shows and they're like, who are you? And then after I get done, they're like, holy crap, this guy is like the Energizer Bunny. And, you know, you're like, <laughs> like, dude, I'm fuel off passion. So if you're not if you're not going to fuel off my passion, then uh, we might not be on the same page. You know, that's just yeah. how it works out. Exactly. That's like when your mats came out when we were at Dino's, you know, and I'm like, dude. I come up before you even set up like, like man, <laughs> I got to have a set of these mats. Like they were so badass, and, and I haven't seen them out, you know, and, um, and they just remind me of like my grandfather's old trucks and stuff. So it was like a no brainer for me and they're still in my truck. Good. I just cleaned them the other day. So good. Good. <laughs> we're happy. We're, we're happy that Doja Matt's happy that you're happy. Yeah. So, so you, you, you serve your, you end up being a mechanic, which is probably a no brainer, right? You probably yep. take your, you took, take your ASVAB, you end up going through and they're like, uh, this guy's going to be wrenching. Uh, how long did you serve? And are you happy that you ended up going in? Yeah. Yeah. I did six years and two months. Um, I loved it. I would still been in, but I got injured when I was in Iraq. Um, so to, to me, I would have definitely stayed in and all my friends are retiring now, which kind of sucks. Cause I'm like, you know, I, I could be retiring now, but I mean, the military take, you know, not everybody has a great story about the VA, but I mean, the VA has been really great to me and they definitely take care of you and, and compensate you and stuff for what, you know, any damage as you have. So again, it's like finding the positive and the negatives, trying not to like focus on all that negative crap. And so I, I thoroughly enjoyed my service and I I'm going to one of my friends wedding in August, end of August that uh, I was in the service with. We were in Iraq for the two years together. Um, you know, he's my roommate. And I mean, he almost died one night and I, I still, I, you know, I'll tear up thinking about it. Cause like my best friend. And so I'm super excited to be actually in his wedding. I was just going to go either way, but then he asked me to go in his wedding. And to me, that's like the best thing in the world so especially somebody who you know not only served with you but like you said there's people that could perish and that did perish right throughout war yeah. and throughout oh, yeah. peacetime and everything else so to know that you're going to somebody's wedding that uh it might not have happened yeah exactly so i'm overly overly excited that's like one of the highlights of my life that's like next to your children and being born in your your wedding like that was be the top you know six things in my life that's yeah, good. That's really yeah. cool. I think when we're young, uh, completely not relative to automotive, but when, when I, when I was younger, I was in a lot of people's weddings and now it's, I don't know, you, I might have taken it for granted. I don't think that I did, but now as an older, you know, individual, you just, I don't know, the older you get, the more you appreciate those small things. And, and, uh, and that's really true. And I, if you're young, keep living the way you're living and, you know, the old stop and smell the roses type scenarios and, but by my mother-in-law says, and I've repeated it multiple times on here, is the older you get, the faster it goes. So you got to enjoy it. That ain't no joke, right? No, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into, into upholstery? I mean, you're, you're, you're a mechanic, you retire, you leave, you, you yeah. take a medical in the fire or in the Air Force. And then, I mean, how did you just stumble on doing that? Well, I got injured pretty bad on my back and my hips. I've got both my hips replaced and damaged my back and stuff. So I couldn't, uh, even to this day, I still can't lean over an engine bay longer than just probably two or three minutes without it just being excruciating pain. I mean, it's unbelievably painful. I was putting some wire loom on boogie nights earlier and I'm just like, Oh my God, my back is still hurting right now. And, uh, and so I was like, well, what can I do that still is physical, but not to the extent where you're, you're bending over. And so that's why, you know, I looked into wild tech and, uh, I was like, well, I can do body work. That's not, you know, you, even if you're, you're doing a, a, a hood or something, if a hood is damaged, you're really just replacing it in the aftermarket since like working at Honda or Chevy or whatever. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. So I, I went to school for, uh, you know, 
collision refinishing, hot rod fabrication. And then I went on a whim and, and did the upholstery class. I was going to take a chassis fab class. And my buddy Mario was like, hey, um, you probably don't want to take the chassis class. It's, it's kind of just, it's a good class, but I was just kind of done with paperwork at that time. It's like, you should take the trim and upholstery class. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. So I didn't have the money for it at the time. So I called my dad and I'm like, dad, can, can you spot me? I don't know what it was. Let's say it's 5,000 bucks or whatever. It's like, can you spot me some money? He's like, yeah, I'll pay for it. You don't have to pay me back. I got you. And I was like, okay, cool, dad. And so um, that's how I, I got into the upholstery world. Once I took the class, I built my first bucket seat within a week of class. Well, it was the second week of class. because That's when we we're doing it. But I built it and it all just kind of made sense to me. It was kind of upside down and backwards. And I was like, all right, it's kind of like gears and mechanical stuff. It makes pretty good sense. It's one way it does it. And uh, I found a picture of that seat a while back, a couple of months ago. I was like, damn, that seat wasn't that bad. Like I see guys that do this for years. <laughs> I still can't make a seat look that good. <laughs> that sounds like an asshole, but um, I always just giggle at it. Cause you're like, if you're not getting better then why are you doing it, right? And, and so once I got out, my wife was going to medical school. She was an RN before and then decided to go to medical school. So we ended up moving to Des Moines, Iowa, where she went to school. And then I started working at a Honda dealership. And so I was doing collision work, refinishing there, just doing small stuff. They're all the old timers, you know, do the heavy hit stuff. So I was doing bumpers and fenders and uh, hoods, just really just kind of little repair stuff. We still run in 70, 80 hours, flight time a week, which is good. And so when I did that, um, the economy, you know, took a shit. What was that, 09 or whatever? The last three guys that worked there, we all got laid off. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I was still piddling with interior stuff there, just doing like little motorcycle seats and things. That's when kind of the motorcycle scene was still really hopping, you know, with Jesse and Orange County Choppers and, you know, Indian Larry, all these guys, you know, with the Martin Bros as well. And uh, so there's still just a ton of bike seats. So we we're doing a ton of bike seats at the time. And uh, then my wife was finishing her last year of med school. And I was like, she was kind of traveling a lot. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, move me and the kids back home to Texas while you finish this, because I know you're going to be gone. And they were pretty, our older kids were pretty small then. And so I was like, I'll just have, you know, my mom help or whatever. And, um, and so I ended up moving back to Texas. And I had a job at a hot rod shop there. So you bought a C10. And it either had AC at one time or it wasn't even an option. Well, Vintage Air has the solution for you. Their SureFit kits are designed to place the evaporator and hoses behind the dash for a factory clean look. In most cases, the SureFit systems will be controlled by your stock dash controls using their exclusive cable converters. The kit provides infinite just right temperature, air blending, and blower fan speed adjustments. The Vintage Air SureFit kits are the best value and the most completely engineered air conditioning system you can install in your C10. Add the fact that Vintage Air has been the most respected name in performance aftermarket climate control systems for 40 years. Damn, son, the choice is obvious. VintageAir.com When you're looking for classic Chevy or GMC truck parts, BrothersTrucks.com is your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration parts. So whether you are restoring an original or looking to customize that classic truck, BrothersTrucks.com has thousands of the highest quality truck parts for you to choose from. So head over to BrothersTrucks.com and order your free catalog today. And don't forget to follow Brothers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates and special offers too. Hey guys, how about a happy 10-year anniversary to the team at Pro Performance? For 10 years, Travis and his team have provided their customers the best products on the market for our trucks. They sell Dakota Digital, Bear Brakes, Boyd Welding, QA1, Vintage Air, and more. They're your one-stop shop for all your truck part needs, stocking fast-moving items to help with production delays. So think Pro Performance when you are creating that parts list for your build. azproperformance.com. That's azproperformance.com. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, move me and the kids back home to Texas while you finish this, because I know you're going to be gone. And they were pretty, our older kids were pretty small then. And so I was like, I'll just have, you know, my mom help or whatever. And, um, 
And so I ended up moving back to Texas and I had a job at a hot rod shop there. And it was like 25 bucks an hour. Well, it's pretty good money. And um, I was like, you know, I, I just, I think I'm just going to open my trim shop. I think I had like 10 or 12, 15 grand, something like that in the bank. And uh, I was like, well, if I fail, okay, cool. I lost, let's just say 15 grand. So I started doing it and I had never done a door panel before, put carpet in a car, nothing. So I totally was just winging it. And, uh, and a lot of times on Martin Bros, you'll hear me. I'll just say, oh, I'm just winging it. Like literally I was just winging it. And uh, so I opened my shop up there, get busy. I did like a 55 and 34 Ford. I just a bunch of cool cars. Then they're doing this car for a guy named Gary Palmer. And uh, it's called the Grit Coupe. And had a big following on the ham and stuff. And uh, and Gary contacted me. He's like, hey, man, I, you know, I'll, I'll see your work. And, uh, you know, I'm doing my car for me. It's like, cool. Yeah, I got to do it. And uh, so anyway, I do the car. It goes down to Roundup. It gets a huge following. It was kind of like a cult thing. And then, you know, Jesse saw it. And I think he had split from the speed shop at the time. And then um, Joe and them saw it. Then the speech shop obviously saw it. And then I started, it's like super fast forward here. Then, you know, maybe a month later or whatever, I started doing work for the speed shop, did several cars for them. And then we were, my wife had ended up moving to Texas after this. And we're moving out of like San Marcos area down there. And uh, Joe had contacted me. He was like, hey man, you know, do you mind doing some work for me? I'm like, hell yeah, it's Joe Martin, you know? And so I did a bike seat for him. He really liked it. And he's like, hey, why don't you come out to the shop? We got a shop going, you know, and I'm like, man, that's an hour drive one way. And, and I didn't really know about the show then, but they had, it was all in the works. Like it was starting. And uh, about a month later, I contacted him I'm like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll come out there. You know, I need a bigger shop space. He's like, all right, cool, man. Then we get out there. And then kind of in the meantime, he had said something about the show, but it really wasn't that deciding factor because it was such a far drive. And I mean, in Texas, you drive an hour, you're driving an hour. Yeah. And uh, so <clears throat> just a second. And some shitty roads too, some bumps, some bruises, oh, yeah. some potholes, some twists, some turns. Bro, when I went to work, I know shit from San Marcos out um, to, to Wimberley out to where their shop is. It's all back roads, two yeah. lane roads. There are deer everywhere out there i swear to god uh i i saw at least a dozen or two cars flipped over from hitting deers i saw a honda accord hit a big buck right in front of me right slows down i see like the deer it hit it so fast there's like, kind of you kind of have to your mind didn't even have time to register like what had happened and then he kind of slows down just keeps trucking 80 mile an hour back again you know and uh but that was kind of that that drive was 60 something miles one way every day and you ever done TV stuff? It's a lot of long hours in general. It's pretty demanding. So there's a lot of times I I sleep in the shop. I grab some leather and I just throw the leather over me like a blanket and just keep trucking. And uh, that's kind of where that was with the Martin Bros. And then after that, the wife got offered a job in Atlanta with the CDC, and she's like, "Hey, you know what do you think about Atlanta?" I'm like, "I don't know much about Atlanta, but I didn't really have a choice because you know." The wife's the wife. And yeah. so, you know, you better say a happy wife is a happy life and say yes. So I ended up going out there and, and I, I loved Atlanta, man. We met so many cool people out there. And, you know, I talk about Cheeseman, you know, but Rick is like, we see lunch every week together. It's just a good friend of mine. And there's so many other people, uh, obviously, with, you know, Eddie and Jason from Automel Direct and Evan from, you know, Oliver Speed Shop and Dave Freaky. Like, there's a ton of just, cool guys out there and as you know the truck scene is massive um and then you know we just kind of you know got onto the bitch and stitching class that we we're talking about so i'll well, let before, you talk <laughs> well before you go there so so at what point are you and, and i kind of like the humbleness of where you're like hey i'm constantly learning and i want to be better and so on and so forth but obviously with iron resurrection and working for joe working for martin bros at some point you've got to start to feel like you're not just winging it. You're, you're like, Hey, I'm starting to master this craft. I'm starting to really learn this. I'm getting some, some really good clients. I'm building some seats. 
I mean, at what point are you thinking, Hey, I, I think I've got this. I think I've, I've got this down. You let me know when that is. And I'll let you know. Cause I still ain't mastered it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's constant learning. Like I, I think a master is like Beethoven or, or, you know, somebody like that. They're masters at their, at their trade. I feel that we are just, we're, I don't know. We're students of the craft now. Granted, you know, obviously we know that we we put out good work and stuff like that. And I hate to say that because I, I hate to even um, talk about it. But yeah, but obviously you put out good work. I mean, people wouldn't you wouldn't have the clients that you have and, you know, people follow you around and they continue to reach out. You've you've been all over the country. So you've got it. Right. You got to know that you what you're doing is kicking ass. We. Yeah, yes, but it's very, it's still very hard to, to say that. Um, I'll say it for you. You don't have to say it. Thank you. Yeah, but, yeah. And I, and I appreciate that, but I, I feel that even they're like, oh, people are like, oh, you're a master of craft. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not a master. Cause uh, I feel a master knows it all or our master feels they know it all. I, I don't know. I think that um, we know a bit. Do we know a lot? No, but we know enough to get by. Yeah to put out cool stuff how's that well and i think maybe if you don't know when you're to the level or you you know it, from the perspective of being humble you're like yeah. hey i'll admit when i don't know i'll admit that i oh, yeah. learn how to do something and i'll i have some people i can call you know what i mean yeah absolutely and i think those people that i would call when i first started were sid shavers uh interiors by shannon were kind of my two go-to uh, Ron Mangus, I went to one of his classes. Uh, he was teaching a C class. My cousin and I, Wesley Cato, Wesley does interiors um, in New Orleans area. So if you guys are down there, he does some kick-ass work. Super talented guy. Um, but we went to that class together, and that's how I learned to build seats. And then how that transferred over, obviously, is like you can take suggestions and then you know build upon it to what you know to what we do now. You know we can build all these seats and teach the classes and things. And I feel pretty confident about that portion of, you know, what we do. What's your favorite part about it? Um, you know, I like just taking from, you know, we do obviously a ton of C10s and, and stuff. Uh, I love just taking that original frame, you know, get it powder coated it and making it all pretty again and then building everything from scratch and then designing the seat, um, I still love doing that. It's difficult sometimes, but it's still super fun. It's good. Think, do, do you have a part where do you like, so I think with the C10 world, like say, for example, like a TMI, right? So they're making kind of a cookie cutter style seats. Do you enjoy, or do you, do you like to do the same style? Like, and have that freedom. So C10 seat, bench seat, bucket, C10 seat, bench seat, bucket, C10 seat, bu bench seat, bucket. Or do you yeah. just, you know, do you like to have like, okay, here's my car, here's my truck, here's my blazer. And I want you to just kind of do your thing. What do you like to have the, the continuous reputation, repu, reputation, yeah, whatever word, yeah. reputation, or do you like to have the full freedom and the, and the craft and the artisan to be mm -hmm. like, dude, I get a, I get to go to town on this. I think both, right? And I say both because if you if you follow our work and and you see what we do, I really like to take the original aspects of vehicles and transfer those over to the design that I'm putting out, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want to update it as well. So like on the the boogie nights on the door panels and on the good guys giveaway truck, which the good guys was the first one I did it on, is that putting you know, it has that floppy pocket on the doors, you know, drew all that up in CAD and just extended that pocket up. So it's like a more modern pocket. So you can still put trash in there like most people do or their cards or whatever. And I think that when you walk past those door panels, you don't really notice it. But the people that know, they're like, dude, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like how, how, what is different? And that's what I like to catch you on. And the same with the seats. It's like, the seats that we do, the shapes that I put on all the seats, just a foam shape, are pretty much all the same. 
all the way across because we just found that we can lower the seat, we can make the back smaller. You know, it gives you a ton more room. It's super comfortable. It's ergonomic on your legs. It holds your legs up in place. It gives you some lumbar support. Like we just get really good response. So one of those things, like if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. Like I'm just going to leave it that way. But even though the base foam may be the same, every, I feel like almost every seat is different in its own way as well. And so like on the, the consoles that, you know, we put in the good guys here with truck, the stuff that we talked about that, you know, we'll have those coming out hopefully in August. Um, but like when you put that console on that floor, it's not out of place. It's not like you're taking a, a 2018 GMC Denali console or whatever this truck may be and flopping it in there and making it fit. And to me, that looks like shit because one, it, it, it's style. It has no style of what that truck consists of, right? That console was designed off of that vehicle specific that you took it out of and put mm -hmm. it in your old truck. Yeah, so yeah. if you look at the consoles, they're square, you know, it's straight up and down. Well, damn, we got a square body truck. Guess what? It's square for a reason. I didn't make it bubbly. I didn't put a lot of shape into it. It is factually like that's what I feel it should look like. And so that's why um, there's like two answers to that question you just asked. Well, I think I tend to be more of a purist as well. So even though like, for example, Terry Rose and Twisted, mm -hmm. that blazer with the Rivion interior, Damn. I mean, it's so far out there that it's just so amazing. But I'm also a purist when it comes to because I rode in these trucks, you know, as a kid and and yep. and all the generations. So I, I don't like to get too far away, um, I guess, unless you're going to go so far that you're going to completely redesign the whole interior. So like on on some of this MTI stuff, they're, they're completely redesigning the whole interior. But I've also seen a lot of these trucks where they keep it simple, right? It's right. like, hey, I took what GM gave me and I made it a little bit better. I made it more mm. modern, just like Boogie Nights. I, I took some cues. I took some 20 years of experience. What works, what doesn't work. What, you know, yep. I mean, for some of these road trips that we've taken, I bought the $1.99 little thing that goes in my vent window. And, and exactly. so I can put a, a, a beer or a 12 ounce can there. So so we've come right. a long ways from, from that, right? But you yep. have different things that you see in a modern vehicle to where you can put cups, uh, you know, because the trucks really aren't designed with a lot of cup holders. People are putting them in the seats. Now people uh -huh. are putting them, you know, in the console where the hump is. So there's a lot of different things. People make they 3d print them. They pull the ashtray out. They got cup holders in there. People are coming up with all kinds of shit, but the bottom line is you could take some of that stuff that GM gave us and we can make it better. And that's kind of what it sounds like you like to do. It's like, I love to kind of see what, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And, yep. and now you are going to, you know, make parts for that. For, so people can, that's, you know, that's, buy, buy these that's right and you know you talk about you know tmi and you talk about some of the other aftermarket companies i and i and nothing against tmi all right so we don't get sued for talking about them but what i hate to see is there are shops that we both know that they build badass trucks and what do they do they slap in the shittiest cheapest tmi interior you could put in there TMI uses the shittiest vinyl you can possibly buy. It's probably $2 a yard for this vinyl. It's thin. It's garbage. The glue they use is garbage. The way those door panels attach are garbage. You know, I don't mind their seats. I've sat in their seats. I feel that they're very comfortable. I hate seeing the TMI logo on there, but it's product placement. That's why they do it. I think you actually have to pay extra for them to take that off of there. Right. And I understand that. But if you're going to produce a product for the masses, right, charge a little bit more, have a better product. Don't charge more and have shitty material and pretty much shitty everything but your seats to do it. And I, I will not put on a TMI interior. Do not bring me one. Don't send me pictures of one. I would tell you to go jump in the creek. I'm not doing it. The same with any other aftermarket company that makes door panels or dashes or anything else. Uh, there's there's other ones uh, like Fessler. Fessler stuff is garbage to me. And I hate to even say it. I'm going to get sued for this or get whatever. But it's like 
go put it on. Go, go try to fit that part to a car. I, I had some, a customer bring me like a Camaro door panel. It was from Fessler. It took me a week to fit those door panels to that car. I was like, I could have built these from scratch. Then put that shit in your car. And then, dude, don't, I just, I am so over it. And I see so many of those stupid TMI interiors and all these badass trucks. I'm like, yeah, you cheaped out because you didn't want to wait on a good interior shop to do your job. So you well, just that's online. exactly what I was going to say. Do you think yep. that they either ran out of money or ran out of time? They run out of time. OK, because you do see you do see some, you know, six figure trucks and 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 then you are kind of surprised when you open the door and you're yep. like, oh, they went with, uh, you know, more of a, a mass produced interior versus something that is custom. Correct. There's a shop in Arizona that does it. And um, we're not mentioning any names. You could look it up. You'll find it yourself. They put TMI interiors in their trucks. And I'm sure TMI has given them the interiors for advertisement. And I get that. But as a shop owner. I'd want to put out the best products that I could. And that's not the best product that you could possibly put out. I don't feel that, that that's what that is. And I'm not saying that because I want to manufacture like TMI. I get what they do and I'm glad they're doing what they do. Somebody needed to do it. But as on a, on a quality standpoint, that's on you, bro. So what I think from that perspective, what would you say from a spitball perspective? What would you say, like, like Boogie Nights, what does a custom interior cost and and the time? So so when somebody's out there building a truck and they're like, OK, I don't I want to budget the time and I want to budget the money. And we all know we've watched resurrections of shows. We've watched uh, we've watched uh, home building shows and it's like, oh, but wait, your foundation's cracked. It's going to be another 20 grand. So ballpark yep. it. What, what is it? If, if somebody said, Cato, I want a custom interior, which includes <laughs> seat door panels, carpet. And I, and I'm talking nice carpet kit, hot rod carpet kit. I'm talking right. five, six piece kit. And uh, the dash, you know, whether that's a polster dash or however you, you, you come up with that, what would yeah. that, what would that run and how much time is that? I don't know. Probably 25. Okay. And three weeks. 25,000. Yep. Not hundred. Not hundred. Not hundred. You can't even, I, I won't even do a seat for $2,500. So, so that, so yeah, I just want to make sure we're, and then, and that's leather. Or is that pleather? That's no, that's leather. That's like okay. top of the line, everything. And when you break that down into cost of what we're buying on our side, right? Almost half of that is materials. Sure. Half of it is is the the carpet. You know, you're paying, you know, carpet is 125 to 150 dollars a yard at cost. All right. Yeah, everything's up. Right. We have to mark that up because we have to make money on that. That's what pays for the sandpaper. That's what pays for all these little items, you know, throughout the shop. Right. We could break it all down. I have it very broken down here. And then you've got leather, you know, leather ranges, good leather is a thousand dollars a high. Then you've got 300 and something plus dollars and, you know, more in foam. And then if you want door panels like Boogie Nights, there's a week in each one of those door panels. And now, so that leaves you a week to kind of do everything else, which I could do them a little bit faster now. But so you're pushing all that out and then you've got to cut all the foam. You've got, you know, there, to wrap that dash, there's a day in just preparing that dash and getting it ready to wrap. And then it takes, you know, several hours just to get all that dialed in. So it's quite labor intensive and then you know if we have to sound mat it or most people don't know how to run wires and we've got to fix all the wiring in it so we're really a master of all of these crafts and i hate to say master because i hate that word but like we've got to be able to just work on the fly and fix all of these things i could show you pictures of just nightmare wiring that we had to go through and and just those little details, like when I left Fuller shop out of Atlanta, uh, Fuller hired Johnny, the guy that worked for me. And I went back a few weeks ago to Atlanta and Fuller's like, man, he goes, I didn't realize 
how hard interior work is. And Fuller is, is considered a metal master. Like that dude is amazing on what he does. And when he said that, that really made me realize like, yeah, our job is hard. And it, you know, we work in three thirty seconds of an inch. That's our numbers we work with. And so you break that down and, and you try to figure that out and, and try not to have wrinkles in a seat or in a dash or which way that cow stretches on a leather hide, which way you should have to lay your foam and all these things that are incorporated into all of these years of experience to make that seat look like that. It's not easy. I can tell you that much because we teach a ton of classes and it's not easy. Well, I can't remember. It's been in the last three weeks. I just saw a truck that the interior, it looked really, really good, but it had a lot of wrinkles in it. And I was really surprised at how, how loose um, it was. And and you look at something like that and you're, you know, you're blown away at like, okay. And then you see that and you're like, oh my God, like what happened that that seat is right. somewhat wavy. And that's, but it's just an experience on how to lay all that stuff properly. And it's not easy to do because when I first started, I was like doing these seats and I'd, you know, these great patterns and everything fit correctly. And then I would put them on and I was like, why am I fighting the seat cover for a day to make it look good? And then I finally realized it's leather. you got to do it in leather to make it look like all these, these guys that do all this fantastic work. And then once I figured out how to do leather, then I was like, Oh, okay. This is a game changer. And so you know, you, you look at, at 25 grand, you're like, really, man, that's a lot. I mean, no, honestly, it's like, we may be profiting 13 grand off of this. So yeah, it seems like a lot, but I mean, we've got years of experience and we have all of these things, again, craftsmen, craftswomen that, that dictate that cost. Cause when you get it back, you're going to get exactly what you paid for. Well, and there's, Obviously, you know, you're paying somebody for their experience, not necessarily just their hourly time, right? That's right. Because it just like they say, man, cheap work ain't good and good work ain't cheap. And that's the damn truth. And I've, when I started this trade, I started at $20 an hour because I was like, that's what I'm worth at that time. And then slowly as the years progressed, I would raise it up, raise it up and raise it up into what we're at now. And to me, I could justify that cost in my head on what I can project and give to the customer at that cost. And, you know, when I'm working, I set a timer on my phone and if you go take a piss or you could take a shit or you go get water or you go next door, like that, that clock is stopping. So you're getting all those hours that I'm billing is exactly what I'm working. There's no bullshit in that. I'm very strict on it. I can show you on my phone, like how I keep track of that and everything else. But, um, so when you talk about bidding the job, right? Like giving that guesstimate a number, um, almost everything we do now, we don't even give a bid on. It's just by the hour. Hey guys, I've got Joe Road, classic performance products, CPP back, Joe, let's talk X10 spindles, go. Yeah, you know, CPP's one of our most popular parts through the years has been our two and a half inch drop modular spindles really popular part. Well, we've kind of taken that to the next step. You know, we've emulated late model Corvette, Silverado, Chevy technology into our new X10 drop spindles. They use a steel hub, sealed bearing hub, really strong piece. As you know, Joe, so many guys are building bigger trucks, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, everything bigger and better. Is this X10 something they should be considering? Oh, absolutely. It's oversized bearings, Definitely great for a guy using big brakes, big wheels, which I'm sure all your guys are. All right, guys, there you go. If you're looking to upgrade, you need a new spindle anyways. You're going to lower your truck. You're running a bigger wheel, a bigger brake. CPP's got it for you with their new X10 spindle. Joe, as always, thank you. CPP, classicperform.com. It's classicperform.com. Since the 1960s, US Mags has held the title for the longest running custom wheel tradition. Experience the wheels that made history and set the trends for American truck culture for decades to come. From cast wheels to full custom one and two piece forged wheels, US Mags keeps you and your truck in mind with every new design and model. Our cast wheel series are designed specifically for Chevy trucks and are stocked and ready to ship, giving you the wheels you need when you need them with perfect fitment. 
Set your ride apart with our custom forged wheels, available in just about any finish and fitment desired. US Mags are guaranteed to distinguish your style and attitude from the rest. Hey guys, I've got Andrew from Painless Wiring on. Andrew, what's the latest? Just working on producing these GM truck harnesses, our best moving vehicle specific, and we're just you know super excited to be able to, to service such a, a great community of, of truck guys. Made in the USA, you guys are probably cranking them out nonstop. A ton of our audience is out there buying these trucks, building these trucks, and they know, hey, painless performance has got me taken care of. Factory options, aftermarket stuff. If you have any questions, call our tech guys. They'll walk you through anything you need to know, and, and we'll make sure your truck gets wired up right the first time. If you want to clean up your underdash, you want to clean up your chassis, it's that easy. Painlessperformance.com. Painlessperformance.com. Thanks, Andrew. So you're getting all those hours that I'm billing is exactly what I'm working. There's no bullshit in that. I'm very strict on it. I can show you on my phone, like how I keep track of that and everything else. But um, so when you talk about bidding the job, right? Like giving that guesstimate a number, um, almost everything we do now, we don't even give a bid on. It's just by the hour because it's custom work. And I can say, oh yeah, it's going to take me a week to build this door panel. And then I've got two weeks into it. Then I've just lost four grand, you know? And then I'm like, dude, this is, you're just, it's, it's not fair. It's not, it's not the way it should be. And I, I, I see that a lot in the industry as well is they'll bid it and then they'll just screw themselves. And I'm like, I'm out. Like I haven't gave a bid in probably five years. I'm just well, And I also think that some of the shops that I know and that I've talked to where people will, for example, you say, okay, four grand or one week, and then you go over and it's like, hey, you better make sure. And I, I feel like a lot of guys are doing this now. Every week they're putting together, this is what we did. Here's your invoice for the week. So there's no surprises because I think as a customer in the custom world, and some guys don't care, right? They've got blank checks and and, and they could care less. They, they really could. But for the most part, part the people out there they do care and they've Absolutely. got a budget and they're like hey I, I just wish you would have told me like that you're going to need another week like don't yeah. just send don't just tell me it's eight grand when you told me it was one week and it was going to be four grand and now i'm completely because then you start to there's a trust situation there where most consumers are going to be like hey i understand you're like hey i ran into this snag it's a change order this is what we're going to do I'm going to try to do the best I can. I'll keep you informed on how much we go over, but we're going to go over. It's like, oh, I hate that you're going to do that, but I'm glad that you told me. Right. It's all comes down to communication. If I'm working on your car, you're getting pictures almost daily. And if I'm not working on it, you're not getting pictures. But I make that very clear up front when they drop the cars off is that I make it very clear that we bill every Friday. You'll get pictures throughout the week. And if I'm not paid by the following Wednesday, I don't care what happened. I'm pushing your car to the side and I'm going to the next one because I have to make money. We are a small business. And if you're storing somebody's car for them and they're not paying you or you're not making money off of it, guess what you're doing? Like Shorty says, you're just pissing up a fishing string. Get it out and get on to the next one. And you hate to be that way, but in business, sometimes that has to be cutthroat like that. And anytime I've told a customer this, I've never had one issue. But it's because I'm very upfront right there, right then on what is happening. And I get, you know, they have all these options now to pay Venmo, PayPal, uh, Zelle, you, you know, have all these options that just can pay you right then. Yeah, you'll lose a bit, a little bit of money for, you know, using their services, but you're also got revenue coming in to pay your bills, pay yourself, keep things rolling as well. What would you say is some of the biggest changes that you've seen since you've been, you know, in interior upholstery especially for somebody who's been behind the lens you've, you've 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 done some very high-end vehicles what's what's some of the biggest changes that uh you've seen i think the biggest change in our industry would be just technology with the a 3d printer being more affordable with uh you know the new pill scanner you can buy for under 10 grand i get that's a lot of money but you're getting what that cost last year was 30 grand that you're getting for nine grand now um, and I think that what people don't realize is like, yeah, you can buy a scanner, you can buy a router, you can buy a, a laser, you can buy a 3D printer, right? But there's one thing that everybody misses 
And that's if you don't know how to run CAD or you don't know how to run Lightburn or all these um, processing you know, things are the, the, the CAD, you know, if you don't want to run those, you can't run those machines. Yeah. And if so, the software, you know, the software is only going to be do what it's told. That's correct. And so what I did is I, I learned all that CAD and I'm still learning it. Cause it's like a never ending process of pulling your freaking hair out sometimes. And um, thank God I have people that know way more than I do that I can call and ask questions to. But I think that's the biggest change with, you know, you have, your big shops like JK Automotive, you've got DJ Designs, you've got Brian Pate that did the Blazer, um, you've got Avant Guard, all these guys. Those are your four, I would call technology heavy hitters because that's they designed the whole interior based off of a computer, right? Which is amazing, and we can do that to the to an extent, but I. I don't know. I don't, it sounds really bad because I still want to do some manual work, but I would definitely want to be there because I still think you need some of that human factor in it, right? <laughs> Their designs and stuff are amazing. And uh, I think with DJ and JK being my favorite because they still bring aspects of the car into their interiors, which I really appreciate where Avant would be more of your, you know, I think their interiors are, you know, 80 to 180,000 on an interior which to me it's justified because these guys are producing off a bespoke interior of one off interior. And it is bad ass dude, but you need to have that deep pocket to do it. And there's guys that do it and they're very busy and very successful at it. You know, Jeremy Carlson, uh, Charles Brazier, uh, like all these guys are just, they're so good. And, and I appreciate what they do. Is it my style necessarily? No, because I'm like you. I like to just incorporate all that original stuff into it. But man, do I respect those guys a lot and what they do, because that's where the future of our business is going to exactly what they're doing right now. Yeah, it does seem like, especially even just every SEMA, you look back, you know, over the last 10 years and how much these builds have progressed, you know, these classic vehicles. And so it's crazy when you think back to, again, you know, 10 years ago and you looked at an interior from a, you know, a hot rod alley, a award winner, award contender, good guys, finalist. And then you look at what just came out last year, 2022. And again, you know, Ricky Holly in our world, uh, Terry Rose, and you look at those interiors and you look at that level and you look at that money and you're just like, holy shit. It's just like leaps and bounds and, and avant-garde. And you think about somebody dropping a hundred K on a hundred K plus on an interior. Yep. And I tell you what, that 20 to 25 sounds really nice. And it's right. just like, dude, it's, it's, you're getting completely, you're getting a full interior. It's, it's just yep. one off. And it's totally justified. I mean, God honest, like, I mean, it's total justified on the hours that it takes to design the stuff. And, and I mean, it's just incredible, but um, yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that. I well, just, and I, I think I just, what's so cool about our trucks is, and I, and I hope our audience understands that just because we're talking to a master interior fabricating machine doesn't mean that's what I just love about C10s and, and Chevy trucks and just classic trucks. You, you don't have to go get, uh, you don't even have to spend 2000 on interior. You can get a seat cover. You can go down to your local store and get some foam. You can do it yourself and you could probably redo an interior with a, a carpet from brothers. Uh, you can get your seat redone. You can break it down. You can paint it. You can yep. rebuild it yourself. And I guarantee you can do a whole interior for probably under a thousand bucks. And it's going to look really, really nice. Now, could you spend 20 to $25,000 on interior? Without a doubt. But that's what's so cool about our scene is you can go find a Papa truck that's maybe never been painted, that the seats wore out on the driver's side, and you can rebuild that. And so you can still have fun in your truck, take it to the shows, and you can be sitting right next to a guy who's got two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in a truck, and he's either one or two next to you, and you're having the same good time that that dude's having. That's that's right. And I think that's what I love about this too is like you said you know you, you look at dino's right just at his show it's the first time i went there last year you know you are a man because that show was amazing i will never ever ever miss that show again i love the vibe i love dino 
is so friendly. Uh, everybody there that helped put on the show, like people even directing all the trucks in. I mean, it was just so good. And then you've got this like round space. You could just hop on and just cruise. You just like, I just stopped in somebody's back of the truck one day and just rolling the show, you know, just to look around. They didn't care. It was just like, it reminded me as a kid, like what shows were about. And it was about the people like screw the trucks, screw the cars. Like it's just about coming and have a good time. But then you, like you said, you have these 200 plus thousand dollar trucks and you have a $5,000 truck next to them. And that $5,000 truck may be getting more attention than that $200 truck because the badass patina on it, like your truck, like orange slush, right? Well, that happens. It's crazy. And people, it's funny. People spend all that money on a, on a high end paint job, you know, and patina's still alive and, and Dude. there's still a lot of fun things that people do with these trucks. And, you know, it, it is pretty crazy. So I, I get, mm -hmm. I love that part of our scene where some guy who's, you know, he's filthy rich. And uh, as long as he doesn't come across as a pompous ass, but if he's out there to have a good time, talk to the people again, the trucks are cool, but the people they are always cooler. got and, cold and, beer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got a cold beer and, uh, and we can get together. And that's, what's so cool about it. You know, yep. different strokes, different folks, and it doesn't matter. It, re it really doesn't. And so it, it is though, when you do see an interior that's so amazing, you know, like when you look at boogie nights, when you look at these different vehicles and, and another thing that really gets me is just the smell, right? I mean, there's yeah. something about that smell. When you got that fresh leather, uh -huh. you're like, Oh my God, I love this interior, you know? And, and you sit down and you're like, Oh my God, this feels so good. Well, there's a reason why it's a thousand dollars a hide, you know, and there's yeah. a reason why it smells the way it does. There's a reason why those cracks look so good. And, and we, and we, we love that. Yep. And people don't realize how long it takes to do that stuff. It will drive you batshit crazy. You know, my wife, and I'm not saying she's not allowed to call me, but she doesn't call me at work. And um, and I don't think she ever realized it till literally yesterday. And I'll tell you why. Because she's I'm out there chasing wires on Boogie Night. I'm having an issue with the fuel selector switch. You know, we talked about it the other day. And uh, I'm like, what is going on? So I'm chasing wires. I'm calling Mike Howe. You know what? How's uh you know, garage out in Georgia. Mike is amazing, by the way. And uh, like, what is going on? And I'm out there for like six hours straight. My wife goes out there. She goes, how are you not frustrated right now? And I was like, because if you get frustrated, I said, you're done. Like, you can't think you can't, you're just out of that Zen of work. Right. And so I told her this years ago, I'm like, you cannot call me at work. If you call me twice, I'll answer the phone because obviously it's important. I said, but don't text me with how bad your day is going. Don't text me about something I didn't do. I was supposed to do. I said, you can tell me that after five, but I have to stay in this little Zen of just peacefulness. And yesterday she come out, she's like, I get it. She's like, I understand now. She goes, and I was like, that's why. And it really made me happy that she realized that because she knew how long I was out there and she doesn't ever come to my shop. I mean, she comes like once a year, you know, she gets it, but she's a doctor. She doesn't get what I do. I don't know the hell she does. And, um, and so you have to just be in that happy zone. And that's because all these super tedious things that we do, you have to say hundred percent focused on those to make them as good as you can humanly you know, make those things. And so you just have to say in that, that, that peaceful area in life. Do you like that part? Do you like the challenge part when you're trying to figure something out, make something work, make something fit? Do you, uh, do you feel like, Hey, when I like that challenge? Yeah, I do. I, um, I actually love fabricating stuff and I, and this sounds really bad for a lot of people that struggle stitching or whatever. I find the stitching part to be the easiest part. So I don't really prefer to do it. It's just, it's boring to me. Um, and, I, and that sounds really bad. Well, no, I just think that's tedious. I don't know that it sounds bad. Yeah. I just feel like doing the same thing can be very tedious. So you, I can yeah. see where somebody's like, oh, I get to mold shape and do some art where, right. but again, somebody who does some master stitching might be like, oh, I, I, I get off on this. I like to do this. Right. And I, and I love stitching them do a ton of it but if you have a once you build that seed like i do a lot of work for bbt fabrications out of illinois you know we've won like street machine of the year street rod of the year street truck of the year like all these big awards we've won together and troy i, I worked so well together 
he'll fabricate. He's a metal fabricator, but anyway, he does a lot of the panels and base panels and shit like that. But um, I don't even know where I was going with this. Um, well, just like you said, the stitching versus oh, the, the stitching, fabrication. Yeah, that's what it was. And so I, I built these seats for the Firebird that won the Bear Jackson Cup. And I spent two weeks on these seats, building them and stitching them. So a week and a half was <laughs> building these seats in a couple of days of stitching them. But once you get to that point and they're built, and I mean, these things are like, I would say they're bodywork worthy. If you could paint them, they would look just as nice as they were without a cover on them. And so you make a pattern, you have a pattern, you know, this takes hours to do. And then you take that pattern, you transfer it to leather and then you'll sew it up. Well, at this point in my career, you know that the pattern's correct. So you know the cover is going to come out correct and it's going to be an easy install. So let's say 95% of these seats that I build and we put covers on, we never even steam them. We just stick them on. So like Boogie Nights has never had a steamer on it. You know, it's, it's just that covers on there. And it, obviously that's due with time, but I think what I'm getting at is like, once you have that good pattern and you, you do it so much, it's just kind of repetitive. It's, a, it's the same process over and over again. It's just a different seat, different design, but still the same process. But with the door panel or with the, you know, a console or, or something like that, it's always evolving and it's always something different. And consoles are like my kryptonite, man. They just kick my ass every car I do. And that's cool. I know when I get to it, I, I better sit down and, and say a prayer to the hot rod gods and and you know hopefully this shit works out the way i want it to <laughs> so why, why do you feel like they kick, kick your ass so much dude i have no idea i don't have know. you ever thought of saying okay i don't want to build consoles I just, i'm gonna have somebody else build these damn things no or do you like the challenge of it i like the challenge again all right i like because that. because it keeps again it's not boring it, it keeps my mind busy. So I'll, I'll sit there at work, you know, we'll make the template or whatever. And, and uh, I'll kind of get the side profile, whatever. We just mock it up. And then, you know, you really have to think about it. Like people want cup holders, people want phone chargers in it. Like you could just set your phone on, you gotta, you know, put USB ports in Windows switches, uh, the shifters, you know, and you don't know what somebody's janked up on the floor or, or something else. And so all these things, you know, you've got to make organically flow, even if that floorboard, you know, I've had tunnels where you look at a tunnel and it's supposed to be symmetric and they're off like this and the shifters here. And you're trying to be like, damn, how do I make this console fit between these two seats and look straight? And then you've got, I mean, a, a good build, a left and a right side is the same, right? But on a, a kind of a, not really a rookie build, but you know, a home build or something like that, you know, they may not have to bend that. So you have to compensate for that all the time, not only with the consoles, the doors, with the dash, with the back seats, you know, the rear floors, you know, you have people that put four links in these cars and they're just janked up in the back and they still want a back seat. You have to figure out how to make that look proportioned to the car. So a lot of the back seats that we build, you can't sit back there, but if you look at them, you would never know. Yeah. So, and that stuff keeps me going. Like, I like that stuff. What about the dash? I kind of like that when you talk about like boogie yeah. nights and, and, and we have a guy here, Dom in Phoenix that does a lot. I can almost tell if it's a Dom dash, especially on a square body, right? For 67 to 72. I mean, that's, that dash is so small. Um, but straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about a square body dash, they all crack, you know, they got the speakers, for example. Mm -hmm. um, do you, like that challenge of wrapping a dash do you like to do the same seam type or how do you kind of break down dashes yeah i think the, a lot of this like if you can find an original c10 dash and it's in a wreck truck just pull it out and put it in your basement just hold on to it because they're so much better than the aftermarket but amd did just come out um with a dash and it, it's it's good and i'm talking about real good so if you need an aftermarket dash get with amd because it fits the best that, that I've found and you don't have to shave anything like some of the other aftermarket dashes, which is awesome. And I'm saying that not because AMD is, is my, my boys, but because it's a damn good product. Cause if it wasn't, I would tell you to go to summit and just buy whatever they have. Well, and, and, um, and I think the key that you said is if you can, you know, a lot of times these stock dashes, they get thrown away. I am not throw, I will not throw away a dash because I know Dom can redo the dash. So if you have that GM skeleton, or you can don't throw your skeleton away because if you think you ever might want to have it covered, which mm -hmm. does seem to be the trend right now, I do see that a lot and it looks right. really good. 
Yeah. And what I did, you know, on the, on the dash is even, you know, the underside of the dash that's painted usually I'd wrap mine in one piece of leather there. So you look at it and it's like, it, it's, you don't really see it again, but then when you see it, you're like, damn, because that's a lot of work. I think you actually say, damn son. Damn son. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You got to say, you got to say, damn son, look at what Cato did on this. That's right. And to wrap that glove box and to wrap that ashtray, you know, these are certain things you have to do with the leather, you know, with skiving and thinning down leather and, and making sure all this stuff flows. And there's a lot to that piece that people don't realize. And the same with the dashes. There's a lot to dashes. And I'm sure this Dom fella can tell you the same thing. You know, it's he makes it look easy because he's done it so many times. And obviously he's a master at wrapping these dashes. It's very time consuming very time consuming well, and i like when you you know you think about like going through the glove box and the ashtray and, and getting that under belly of mm -hmm. the dash it does give it a modern style to something again just like what we said it's like well gm gave us this how can we make it different how can we make it stand out well if i jump in even a brand new truck or my 07 classic it's like it's all the same so right. so it gives you that feel and again that's just more smell because it's it's more material it's going to cost but right it, it's going to look good and it's going to smell great yep and it's one of those things that don't stick out you know like you know with an aftermarket door panel or something you know that that's on factory, you know, but if you yeah. make it, if you trick somebody's eye, I feel that I've done my job correctly then. Oh, for sure. I love that when you see somebody or if I, you know, if I'll go up to somebody and be like, well, it looks like you, you curved the front of the bed here. You did this, you got rid of the seam. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Most people don't notice that. And they're like, and they like that, right? It's that challenge of, of taking one of the trucks. I was just up at a shop the other day and, and you don't see this very often, but on a 67 to 72, the B post of the door well, and the cab, it does, it does the way that the way that it yep. lays. Right. Yep. So, yep. So, yep. so for the audience, every now and then somebody will make that top, let's just say for the perspective of audio, the top of the door, 100% mm -hmm. flat because right. it's not right. If you put a level on your door frame, it's not going to be flat. Mm -hmm. So knocking that front, the a post down is going to give you that flatness and, and you'll, and you'll look at it. And obviously I've looked at so many damn C tens that you're like, wait a minute, is that different? Did you change that? You know, and sometimes you can tell that the, the rain gutter, the gutter has been, you know, modified so you're already seeing that mm -hmm. some of the different gaps in the seam in the cab and so on and so forth but there is a lot of little things that people can do to these trucks that will change the way that it the eye catches it yeah absolutely because even on you know boogie nights is um as nice as the gaps are well i measured the amd doors compared to a to a factory door and they are exactly the same there's not a difference right so i took a a template of the top of the door I put it in the computer in CAD and I cut it out on the water jet and I made a fill piece for that door to make that gap exactly what it's supposed to be. I did the same thing for the hood to get the hood gaps correct. And I did the same thing for the tailgate to make the tailgate correct. And so when you look at that and you look at the gaps, you're like, oh man, wh why are they so good? And you'll see that on a lot of trucks. Like you said, you're like, because they spent the time to make those gaps look good because that ship was not easy. Well, and it and it wasn't that way from the factory. If you get a pop-up no. truck, those those trucks, they're making those trucks in minutes. You know, they're putting those things together. So they weren't gapping them the way that, uh, you know, a SEMA build is going to be gapped. And when you see a gapped vehicle, whether it's a truck or a car, that's uh, it is something that just sexy, very sexy. <laughs> your, your eye will catch it and be like, holy shit, that looks good. Yeah, because it's like they just took a butter knife and just cut this line for the door out of the paint job. And they like Picasso this thing. You're like, dude, good on you, bro. Cause I know that that's not easy. Well, let's talk a little bit about boogie night. So it's uh, we got the avocado green, uh, avocado yeah. green in there. Avoc yep. Yeah. We talked about that at SEMA. So mm -hmm. what made you decide on a square body? Well, I didn't. <laughs> you got it for free. You got it, you got it cheap. No, like I bought a cab out of like Alabama or something. And I, it was a rust-free cab, no doors, had the front and rear glass in it. And I just got it just to scan the truck for aftermarket parts that, you know, we're, we're producing in the process of. And, and then Eddie and Jason come by from Auto Metal Direct and like, hey, man, what are you going to do with that cab? I'm like, 
I'm just using it to scan parts. And I was like, well, do you want to do a SEMA build? I'm like, no, not really, you know? And uh, they're like, well, what if we sponsor the truck? And then we help you get other things as well. And because I know how much a nice SEMA build is, it's very expensive. And, and uh, I'm like, well, I said, okay. I said, let's do it. I've built several cars for myself. I'm not just your average, what I like to say, not just your average upholster. You know, I know a mechanic, weld, build shit, you know, stuff like that. Feel well-rounded. And so. Literally and figuratively. Yes. Yeah. Well-rounded. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> and so, so I'm like, all right, let's do it. And so I got, I put out like, I don't know, a guy named Andy out of like South Carolina, North Carolina. I can't remember at the time. He posted a chassis or I saw it. And uh, so I bought a chassis, original chassis for like 350 bucks. So I've got like $600 in the cab and the chassis on this at this time. And then parts just start flowing in from, from AMD. And, you know, you got to put all this stuff on and gap it and all this stuff. And so that was kind of the process. Well, doing body work, obviously, for all those years, I body worked a truck. And then uh, Rockford Smith of Rockford Custom Paint out of Georgia, who painted Boogie Nights would go behind me and make sure my body work is good. This dude's like 23 years old. That painted my truck. Fucking uh, amazing. He's so good. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story about him in a minute. But anyway, so Rockford and I would work on this truck. And we were talking about the other day. He's like, man, we did that truck quick. We built that whole truck in seven months. Just literally myself in Rockford. And then, you know, we had like Evan from Oliver Speed Chassis come over and then Mike answered a ton of questions for me and stuff like that. But generically speaking, it was just me and Rockford on that truck. And so we worked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of hours on that thing. And so after we get all the body work done, get the motor in, all this mess, Rockford takes us to, sh to shop. Hey guys, are you thinking about swapping out your old motor for a more reliable LSLT based power plant? We've got great news for you. PSI Conversion is offering our listeners 10% off your order. Behind each PSI harness, you get over 10 years of experience in the business, online tech support, phone support, and harnesses made in the U.S. That's PSIConversion.com. And don't forget, use code C10TALK and save 10% today. Mark Hay has been in business for over 40 years. It all started in the original owner's garage, from humble beginnings of a couple parts in a garage to a two-building manufacturing facility making over 6,000 parts. Mark Hay has grown to be one of the country's premier truck parts manufacturers. They not only design the products, but also design the tooling to build the products, guaranteeing quality control. They have made their original parts from the original trucks. Aluminum strips are double polished, creating a mirror finish and crystal clear anodized. They offer quality parts built by Americans for old American made trucks. So when you're looking for body moldings, bed strips, bed wood, and so much more, think Mar K. That's mar-k.com. You've heard me talk about my gauges. Dakota Digital. I love them. Don't forget the interior of your build. Dakota Digital has the best gauges for our trucks. Whether you want a direct fit into the stock bezel or something mm, custom, these kits are complete with sensors for any engine. The new RTX series is really incredible. I think it stands for retro, but it should stand for rad. They look just like the stock clusters, but have all the technology you'd expect from Dakota Digital. You can change the lighting colors, customize the reading in the message centers, and do it all from the mobile app. That's right. The HDX and RTX series have Bluetooth technology, so you can mess with them from your phone. I'm looking at RPM, trip odometer, percent fuel, oil pressure, and now I have the GPS set up. I can tell you direction, elevation, and even outside temp. Damn, son. It's like a modern truck, but even better in a classic. Dakota Digital is absolutely the best in aftermarket gauges, so check them out at dakotadigital.com. dakotadigital.com. And you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook, too. Just literally myself in Rockford, and then, you know, we had, like, Evan from Oliver Speed Chassis come over, and then Mike answered a ton of questions for me and stuff like that, but generically speaking it was just me and rockford on that truck and so we worked a lot a lot a lot a lot of hours on that thing and so 
after we get all the body work done, get the motor in, all this mess, Rockford takes us to, sh to shop. And I, I get a hold of uh, Chaston, which is a pinstriper out of Georgia. I'm like, Chaston, this is an, these are some ideas that I want for the truck. I said, I want you to give me one rendition. That's it. I said, I don't want any more. And I, I said, this is just the ideas. I just want stripes on it, but I don't want this, you know, some parameters that I set. And he come back like two or three days and he sent me the rendering of what it is now. And, um, and so I give that to Rockford. He's like, oh yeah, I got it. Let's do it. So we had the main color and, and I, I told him I wanted the three tones in the middle, kind of that sunset sunrise look. But I was like, hey, and I'm pushing Rockford because he's still young. I'm like, Rockford, go pick out the colors. Just go, go pick out those three colors. Oh man, I can't do it. Yes, you can. I got faith in you. Go do it. And, uh, and he went there, picked out the three colors. He comes back with like three of each. And so me and his buddy, that has nothing to do with cars. We all just sit there and we all picked the colors. We're like, okay, pick your favorite color. Boom. All right, that's a color. Boom, that's a color. Boom, that's a color. And that was it. That's how that went down. Now, after Rockford paints this truck, he comes back to me. He's like, kid, I got to tell you something, man. I'm like, yeah, what's up? I thought maybe it dropped apart and screwed something up or something. Just not want to tell me. He's like, I've never painted stripes on anything before. And I'm like, are you shitting me? Yeah, he's and winging he, it. Dude, bro, anybody at C10 Nationals this weekend, right? You go look at Boogie Nights. You can't feel those stripes. You can't see those stripes through the clear. It is flawless. And I'm not saying it because that's my truck. I'm saying that because he's that damn good. And I'm like, <laughs> mind blown. Mind blown. And I told Rockford, I said, Rockford, I'm telling you, when you get done with this truck, I said, this truck is, is special, right? It's not a red and white. It's not a red and blue. It's not an orange truck. I said, this truck is special. It's one of a kind. And I said, the, the, the stripes, this is what we need for this truck. Like, this is the time to do it. And he's like, oh, whatever, man. You, I'm like, he's so busy. He's like a year and a half out right now. Yeah, yeah. You're like, he didn't believe you. And now yeah. you call him and you're like, I told you. Yeah, he told me when I was back in Georgia, you know, a few weeks back, he's like, man, I said, I got to tell you something. He's like, I, didn't, I thought you were just bullshitting me. You know, I'm like, no, no, man, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I knew, like, I knew the impact of the truck. That truck has been to one, well, two shows, SEMA and Dino's, right? It's already been in CK Magazine several times. It, it was on the cover of street trucks. Yeah, March. Yes, right, all over the internet. I said, that's two shows. I said, Rockford. Think of the power that that truck has, right? And it's only been to two shows. So well, and a lot of people that see it on social media and or uh, in a magazine, they're not even going to know or probably not even know and assume that it's just a, a, a decal or some sort of vinyl wrap. They're not even going to assume yep. or they won't. It's safe to say they are going to assume it's something that's not paint. And then that's you're right. like, oh, no, this is paint. Exactly. And that's where that conception or our realization of like what that truck is comes into play. It's those things again, like wrapping the bottom of the dash, painting those stripes, things like that. Those, and I'm not saying it's the best truck. I'm not saying that by no means. I'm just saying the impact that that truck had already on two shows. Mm -hmm. And I, and I feel I'm grateful for that, but I didn't do that truck for me. You you do that trick for the people that help you. I'm for busy sure. already. I don't need yeah. any more work. I don't build vehicles for people. I built that for, because of, you know, for me, right? So now Rockford's busy. Okay. Rockford's back. Evan helping me put the chassis part, all QA1 suspension, stuff like that, putting the motor in, all, the, all these little things they help me with. And, and advertising for him, he's busy. My buddy Corey shopped that truck for street trucks, right? Now, he just got hired by street trucks. And so those are the things you're supposed to do in life is help other people. And if that truck brought all of that for them, then, then that's a success for me, no matter what. And I'm happy with that. And I get, I'm thankful I get to drive that truck. I just drove it today, took my two little girls for a cruise in it, like stuff like that. That's the stuff that I like. But when it comes down to it, you find and you surround yourself with, again, with those positive people. 
people that you know are going to make an impact on this industry are people that you know is going to make an impact on other people and you help them succeed in life, then your life is already a success no matter what. You cannot fail. It's kind of like the giving truck, right? When you think about that, and that was a lot like what Terry said with with Twisted. You know, he's like, hey, Chris England, you know, he's blown away now with the amount of work. So once these people get behind and you've got your team and it's like, all right, we've got our team and we're, you know, we're building some really amazing stuff. And I think for Boogie Nights as well as the, you know, the expression that it provides, the um exclamation that when you see that truck it takes you back to you know the 70s and the vibe and you just don't see that a lot now you're going to see people that are going to kind of mimic that and again you know there's flattery within that um you'll you know i see that even with orange slice people will take the impact stripes and they'll do a yep. decal of a of a impact stripe and you're like oh that's super cool right it's something fresh it's something different and it's cool that your truck literally could have been something that GM put out, you know, in the seventies because of the funk that it provides. That's right. It was a deluxe model. And then, you know, we put the three wheeler in the back. That three wheeler is a 74 Honda three wheeler that Rob Sorger out of Washington, out of Bonnie Lake, Washington built for me. We went to wild tape together. We're still friends. Same with Corey and I, Corey and I went to wild tape together. Um, But even Rob was like, Oh man, I'm just, you know, I'm just building this. And, that track was no joke, man. That track was like 10 grand to build. Um, well, and it, it took, it took boogie nights to, a, it put the boogie in boogie nights, right? Exactly. I mean, it took it to a whole nother level. You, you might come around the corner and I remember at SEMA and you're like, all right, this is rad. And then you're like, look at this 50, get out of town. Right. Just so rad. And then we painted it to match and now he's busy building those. He, I don't know how many he's built like six now since SEMA. Yeah. So uh, again, it's just, surround yourself with good people and you know good things will happen i guess i don't did you know that you wanted it green at that point or did you know you just wanted stripes and then you guys kind of came up with the avocado no we uh we 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 knew it was gonna be green that was the color i picked out i think that color was a custom blend for me but it was based off of a um i think like a a chrysler interior color because you know back in the day volkswagens were all those pastel colors and then Dodge kind of incorporated all those pastel colors, you know, these past 10 years or whatever. Um, and then now GM and everybody's doing it. But I think it's just finding that that special color that nobody's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to paint my truck that color because it's kind of a funky color. And, oh, it's very funky. Right. And people hate it or they love it. But either way, you're going to talk about it. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, and growing up in the seventies, I mean, I had a fridge that was that color. We had, you know, yep. uh, an oven that was that color. And I, I think that it was all called avocado. And that, that was the color of my fridge and my stove or oven as a kid, it, yep. you know, I, I, I'd almost like to put the two of them together, you know, and, and my grandpa had a 72 Ford and I believe it's very similar in, in color as well. So, oh, so Ford has cool. a, a funky green like that as well. So it, it yeah. is cool, you know, it, it, and, and when you see that on your truck and with the stripes, if you saw it without the stripes, it wouldn't even be in the same class. It's it just no, the it stripes. Looks funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would look crazy. And I think one of your renderings that you had initially, there was no stripes. So there was no stripes. Yep. Yeah. So doing the stripes and then you guys kind of held off, right? You, you purposely, held yep. off knew what you were doing and like all right we're gonna we're gonna wait and we're gonna you know we're gonna debut this thing the way we need to and give a little shock and awe that's exactly right because I, I i told rock i was like when we post pictures even the color was all black and white i said don't post these pictures because one i don't want somebody coming to see me with the same color truck mm-hmm. because it's happened you see it all the time and then with the stripes i was like nobody needs to see this because nobody's done that before not to what we did on that truck and how we cut it off you know because you know a lot of you know stripes will come through the door into the fender and then of course with anything you know those doors start sagging your lines don't line up and so that was very important to me when i talked to chas and like we have to we have to have a cutoff spot here because that will run this truck and you know you you need that four or five inches in between each one to trick your eye now if you put a level across that i mean it's laser straight because rockford did such a good job at it but even if it wasn't, you know, it was definitely tricky where you, you wouldn't be able to see it. But, um, you know, we did the, the bedliner 
cover, you know, color in the bed. You know, the whole underside of that truck is all powder coated and undercoated too as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice, like, it's a well-built truck. I, I feel it's a well-built truck, even though I built it, but um, I'm really happy with it. So what's next for that truck? You, you're you going to take it out this week. You've got C10 Nationals right in your backyard there. Yep. Is that something where you're, you know, you're going to take it on a little bit of a tour? You have some other shows you want to hit or what are you thinking? Well, for now, I'm going to take it to C10 National. But the trick is, man, I'm actually going to sell the truck. And not because I really want to, you know, we briefly talked about that earlier. But like moving out to Salt Lake City um, is actually exp more expensive here than it is in Atlanta to live. And so I'm solely selling this truck just to recoup some of my money that it cost me to move out here. And am I attached to this truck? Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll always be like your truck, your orange truck that everybody, this will be, you know, my truck that I built and I'm fine with that. But on a, like a, you know, you have to, you have to put your family first and you, you have to think of like the longevity of these things. And you're like, well, if I could sell this, I could put it in the bank, then I could build another one later on, I could literally build the same truck, but I'll build a cola truck next time because I already have some ideas for that. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, there is an evolution. So you probably wouldn't even want to build the same truck. You would have something, you know, something new, something fresh, something funky, and you have style. So that's the thing, right? So people, I was talking to a guy in the last month and he's like, Hey, we, the debate was whether or not when you find a pawpaw truck, do you sell it as is or do you lower it and put wheels on it and so on and so forth? And he goes, I find always that I do better when I lower it and put wheels on it. And I'm like, yep. that just seems asinine to me. And he's like, I go, because I would want the blank canvas. I would want the fresh canvas. And he's like, that's because you can look at something and visually see something cool, the style, so on and so forth. But some people he's like a lot of people can't so they That's want correct. the truck just done and they don't they want the wheels they don't want to make those decisions and so on and so forth so so if you do another truck or when you do another truck you'll you'll change it up you know what i mean that's, that's right absolutely absolutely well and one of the most important things i think to talk about in that perspective is boogie nights and the wheels was that hard to pick those wheels and do you feel um do you know, not feel, do you, you need to know that you, you couldn't have picked a better wheel. I do know that. And, and you're exactly right because it's, it's the old, uh, Halibrand, the old kidney bean style Anson wheels. That to me is an iconic wheel for those trucks. Like on your truck, yours are Chrome, I believe. Right. Yeah. So mine again, and uh, same thing, it was just, you know, people it's, it's like, you, I can't imagine the truck without a different wheel and, and, and you see right. them and you, yeah. So they're the U S mag Indy hauler chrome, you know, mm -hmm. they're a billet Indy uh, kidney bean style slot mag. Right. And, and so, you know, Holly uh, was one of the sponsors on the truck and obviously they own Halibrand. So I reached out to those guys. I was like, Hey man, I said, can I get these wheels? They're still new out. I think, I don't even know if I, I've never saw a set until after the truck, you know, like on another truck. Yeah. And there were, there weren't, they were really fresh and, and new at that point. Right. Right. Exactly. And I still feel that like, I wouldn't change them because again, that 70s style paint, that 70s style will the 70s style, you know, mini bike, you know, even with the interior running, you know, that cloth insert in the seat, you know, these are all, there's a reason for all of this. It's not just like through billets on it. And, you know, it would have made the truck. Like I love, uh, I can't remember who it is, but there's a badass set of billets out there that I, I really wanted, but my God, they're so expensive. I couldn't afford them. Mm -hmm. And, and so um, then I'll start looking, I'm like, okay. Then I'd stumble upon those Halibrands. And I remember, you know, my dad having the old kidney beans, uh, the old Anson's on like the vans and all these cool stuff. And we still have some at the house, but I was like, dude, that's it. Like, that's the will. And, and I put a little bit more, they're twenties and uh, I put a little bit more meat on the tires. So it's more drivable. Um, and so just to me, it's, it's, it's perfect. Like I knew then I still know now I wouldn't change them for anything. What's your rear? Is Are you 10, 11? Do you know how wide you are? I think they're 10 in the back. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah and you could a lot of times you can go 11 on a square body you got to be yeah. careful of the the screws for those inner fenders but yeah you can go 10 10 and a half i mean it depends right and they had all that figure out all the offset everything on that was already on their website and i literally just looked on there and you know knew what brakes i was running and all that stuff and just ordered them up i mean they're just a, a off the shelf product so anybody c10 can run them well, there you go. If you are interested in Boogie Nights, one badass truck, uh, cover truck, cover street trucks, March of 03. Um, it's in a lot of print mag because you get some uh, advertisement and uh, I see it, you know, different, various different advertisements, but you can hit up Cato and it's going to be available. And I, I get it, man. I get it. I, I've actually, my audience would be like, what? I'm actually considering the same thing with orange lights. It's like, I've got to kind of move on. I want to go to build some other stuff, you know, and you, you get a lot of coin wrapped up into a build and, uh -huh. you know, you're kind of like, you know, and that's that thing, right. Where we wish we could keep them all. And I always love asking, you know, what's the one that got away. What's the one that you wish you could have back. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it's kind of fun having that story, right? It's fun having the one that's, yeah, I wish I could have this back and I could have this back. And people always ask me, do you wish you could have Yellowstone back? And I tell them every time I've never hesitated. No, I don't oh. want it. I had fun with it. I I drove the piss out of it. I don't want to store it anymore. I don't want to try to make 18 point turns in it. And uh, yeah. And so I think if you accomplish, you know, different things with different vehicles that you get to that point where you're like, all right, I checked the boxes. So if you've checked all those boxes for boogie nights, then, uh, and just like you said, you can, you can build another one. Right. Exactly. And I do. And I love the chase of building them too. I think that's kind of my favorite part is it's chasing those parts and finding the right stuff for them. And I mean, I've got a 34 Ford pickup. I've got a 32 Roadster. I got a 62 Impala. I've got my 55 Chevy big window. I've got my Metro. I've got an old sixties front engine dragster. So these aren't my only cars. Like, I and mean, when I say I'm deep into cars, like my wife, she doesn't even know how many cars I own because I refuse to tell her and she'll tell you the same thing. And she's like, God, just tell me. I'm like, no, I'm not telling you. And, but again, it's different for each person. Like me as the chase building it and that first drive. Mm -hmm. Once I get that first drive and I fill the truck and, and you get that, that hot rod therapy or street truck therapy that you need mentally, you know, when you go drive these trucks or cars, then I'm happy. Then I'm like, okay. But, you know, my 55 truck and my 62 Impala will never go anywhere. My 55 truck, you know, is the first truck I ever bought. Second owner, my dad bought it. We built that truck together. My 62 Impala was willed to me by an older gentleman, Ronnie Rains, that had, had passed away. You know, he, he'd willed that car to me. I never saw that car out of the shop since I can remember. So we'll say mid 80s until I got the car, it never left this guy's garage, never even heard it run. But I used to play in this car when I was a kid and I would always go, you know, come visit him when I would come back from the military, like he was a good friend. And then when he passed away, I didn't know he willed it to me. My dad called me crying one day. He's like, Hey man, you know, he, he willed you the car. I'm like, are you serious? You know? And he's like, yeah. And I was just so ecstatic just to have it. And it's at my dad's now it's a rust free car, just stuff like that. So those are the cars I won't get rid of, but I'm emotionally attached to those. Am I emotionally, physically attached to the Boogie Nights? Yes, of course, but not to the extent of those two cars. Sure, sure. And there's a well, big difference. Well, and ultimately, you, you you know, how many builds do you have left in your lifetime? And, uh, you know, the time, the money, uh, the yeah. money and, and, and the time away from the family, the storing of vehicles, so on and so forth. Some people could store 10 vehicles in, inside and take care of them and uh, whether they're driving them and they're trickle charging them and they're changing the oil or not, you know, it just depends. But it's all a balance, right? Mm -hmm. absolutely so balance. what's next for you so obviously you guys are very successful with the bitch and stitch and classes you guys yep. uh it seems like there's more and more people um attending these things is that something that's going to continue or are you going to continue cranking those out yeah we'll still continue to crank those out for sure um uh, you know I, I initially moved out here to work with justin and justin's great we are still very good friends um but i am going to go and just do my own uh, thing again, um, away from that shop to be on the nice side of things. We'll just leave it at that. Not against Justin, but um, I just don't do drama and I don't do bullshit. And I especially don't do people that are assholes. And that's why I'm leaving. And so I'm just going on my own shop. Justin is great. 
if you ever met Justin, he's fantastic. Um, but I, ca I can't deal with the negativity. I'm not a negative person, again, like we've talked about, and I refuse to be talked down to by anybody. And so that's why I'm leaving, and I'm just going to go open you know, my own shop here. I'm actually in the process now of moving my stuff to the new shop. Um, and then once that happens, you know, we talked about this at Dino's, is it's cranking out, you know, more production parts and things like that. And we just haven't had time. So we've just been so busy. And now I feel I've got a better grasp on things that, you know, I've ordered my own router now. And so to be here in August, once we get that in, then we're going to start producing a lot more parts, not only for C10s, but also a lot of Ford stuff with Solomon, with Ford Air that we're going to start doing with him as well. So be on the lookout, I'd say late August, early September to start cranking out the, the door panel pockets that we have that are extended. We have a lower door panel part for like speakers and things for the C10 trucks that we'll have available, the consoles, of course. And then in the Ford trucks, we'll have door panels and some other items that we're working on as well. I, I think it's cool to kind of go back. I wonder, at, you've been, had your own shop, worked at multiple shops, been on TV shows, taught classes. Um, obviously, you went to Wildtech. You were a student. You're continuing to be a student. Do you, do you, have you found that you successfully or, or enjoy being the, the, my own shop is does it always come back to that or have you enjoyed working with and for other people as well i mean somebody who has had the journey that you've had uh -huh. you've 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 had it almost every way yeah and in every shop that i've worked in a lot of people are confused about it is that i've run my shop out of that that shop right i've never directly worked for them so even with justin i work for myself Sure. Just as a contractor. And I would still bring my own customers' cars as well. And then the same with um with like Martin Bros and Fuller's and stuff. I, you know, I just rented space out of there. And then it was a convenience for them to have me there because obviously with the TV stuff and then doing all this other work. So to me, just even though I'm I'm leaving like not in the same shop with Justin, it's just another day for me. It's just it's still work. Like yeah. I still operate the same. It's just, I like Justin's company. So that was hard for me to live because I really enjoy Justin. I really enjoy his craftsmanship and stuff. So to me, that's kind of a bummer, but I'm going to moon shop, do my own thing again. It's not a big deal. It's do you find that, that you prefer to have two to three people just because of that, because you have the relationships and it makes the day and you kind of, you, whether you get the locker room feel, you get the, yep. uh, you know, you get to interact with some, some people versus, you know, running solo. And some people want to run solo all day. Yeah. I don't want to run solo all day. That's why I like working at other people's shops because um, when I first started, I worked in my backyard at a 30 by 40 shop and I worked there for like two years. I was going stir crazy. I mean, literally, because you just order stuff in, you know, you don't ever have to leave. And I was like, I have no human interaction. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can't do this. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going nuts. And so that's when I decided, like, I'm going to start working at a, somebody's shop. And I think really, um, I don't know anybody else that was doing that at the time, but me. And then as time has progressed, there's a lot of shops that have their in-house interior guy now. And I, and I think that the people that are producing that many cars, it's definitely a, appropriate to do. So I, I, I don't feel like I set the standard, but I, I definitely feel like I set the precedent for, you know, what people can do and, and how effective and efficient it is and, uh, uh, you know, an advantage for them to have a trim guy in-house. Well, I think they probably – they benefit greatly, right? Just the Absolutely. amount of time. And then, and then I feel like even the interior guy is going to benefit because it's like, well, here, you're right here. You're, I don't have to wait. I don't have to send you pictures. I don't have to, you can fab it up. We can help you. We can do the three, three, six, you know, three thirty seconds and we could do all that. So it works out. And it's really not a bad thing to think, Hey, we're going to charge you rent. It's going to be a little cheaper because you're part of our team. We love that we have you here. We know that having you here is a benefit to us as long as everybody's getting along. So, uh, you know, that's yeah. part of it. And, and, uh, you know, you've worked through that. So it, it is kind of cool. Yep, absolutely. I've, I've always 
you know, been invited back by every shop that I've worked for. I've never had any animosity or negative um, response from anybody that I've worked in the same building with. Do I feel like I have that here? No. And that's why I'm leaving. Yeah. Well, the, like you said, it's like, Hey, I can, I can work through it. I can. And now I get to go do my own thing. And, and uh, you've already got, do you have clientele all over the, the U S that will now come to you and send you their vehicle or, or say, Hey, this is what I'm building. You know, can you come out or do you say, Hey, now you got to get me your, you got to get me your ride. Yeah, um, definitely. Both, both of those things actually, because with Troy, with BBT fab, I've been doing work for him for so many years. I actually have a shop in his shop. So I have a sewing machine. I have routers. I have all these things that I need to do my job. And then plus, you know, he's building some of the stuff as well because we work so good together. But, you know, we worked on a lot of a concept vehicles that, you know, we have NDAs with that we can't even talk about that. If I told you who they were, when I can tell you, you'd be like, no way. I'm like, yeah, we did that. And nobody would know. And yeah, that's so, pretty cool. And we're working with a concept company right now. And, you know, I'll tell you in about five years who it is. All right. I'll hold you to it. I'll, I'll hold you to it. Uh, it's going to be a uh, June of 28. We're going to have some beers and, and, uh, and we're going to talk about it. He's going to spill all the beans. That's right. And so that's super fun to me. And people don't, I get contacted all the time by stuff like that. And I love it. I love doing that one-off stuff, man. It gets your, gets the jocks off, like just that brain just moving. I like that. Do you find it challenging when you do that one-off stuff to Hell not, yeah. to not, not tell but to not take some of that stuff and do you to to the next level of your next build i think that it's so different because it's all new stuff uh-huh so it's it's completely different so even like none of the stuff that i've done on those have ever flowed over to any of the hot rod stuff that we well it's need. probably a good thing then yeah so it's so conceptualized that it just doesn't it doesn't even phase like what you're doing so Okay. So you've got uh, the new shop. You're getting ready to open on your own. You have a very busy life between your wife traveling. Uh, this, this interview hilarious you know, for the audience. We've been trying to kind of, he's been busy. He's been a busy boy. So from, from moving the kids, uh, mama has been moving and shaking. Um, you've got a big show this weekend. Are you setting up a booth and, or are you just taking boogie nights out there? No, I'm going to set up in the vendor area. I'll be representing Auto Metal Direct out there. So I'll have, obviously, I'll be representing my company, Auto Metal Direct, because I have a great advertisement for them. We have Boogie Nights. It has all their panels, the yeah. bed, the fenders, the doors, the hood, the inner core support, like inner fenders, everything. That's all Auto Metal Direct. And I would totally, totally represent them because I stand behind their product because I know how good it is. And so that's what I'll be doing at the show. And I'll have Boogie Nights out there. And just having a good time. And really, I've only been here since right before SEMA. So I'd like to meet other car people here too. So I'm excited to meet more locals as well. Where's the new shop at? Uh, it's in North Salt Lake. Okay. So, yep. Okay. All right. So pretty much wrapping it up. I'm going to have you stay on the line, but okay. I've got a little question for you. So you're driving boogie nights. Yep. You've got one CD. It can be something you've made, or it can be one that you bought. It can, be a, it can be a greatest hits, yeah. but it's stuck. It is stuck in there, and you yeah. got to listen to it the whole time you're driving. What, yeah. what CD is it? Uh, NWA. All right, 1988. All yep, all day. That's yeah, what I'm to. doesn't doesn't get doesn't get old. Uh, oh. oh, where's my tape? I actually have that tape too, original. Yep. Never. I was listening to today in Boogie Nights. Matter of fact, like that's my jam. Like it's that it's that music you can sit back to and cruise, or you can rock out and just like, you know, it's just that album. Oh, yeah, man. it does. It doesn't get old. I, I'm a big fan of License to Ill, and it's funny because I've my wife literally hates the Beastie Boys because <laughs> my kids have listened to from Girls, Girls, Girls to uh brass monkey to all the way up all the way down nwa is going to be, definitely be there uh one of them that she might not let me uh 
let me roll with because I've wore it out so much, but license to ill for sure. She, yeah. she, uh, we just dis- discussed this the other day. She's like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't need you to listen to that when we're traveling. So <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've wore her out on that, on that, uh, license uh, to ill. See, my wife's a big Snoop Dogg fan. So I mean, we're jammed no matter what. So it's hard not to like Snoop for sure. I know, but as, as we're younger, you know, you kind of rock on this stuff, but as a 40 year old doctor and she's still rocking this new, and Oh no, I love that. You see social media where you see like these moms (laughs) and they're like, well, when I drive to, I drop the kids off, you know, they're listening to something that's maybe more more PC. And then when they roll the window up, they're freaking, you know, little gin and juice all day long. Right. All day. Yeah, All it's perfect. All right, dude, we wish you nothing but success. Uh, we want to thank you for your service. Um, I hope you had a great Father's Day uh, yesterday. So we are time stamping that as well. And yep. uh, yeah, I mean, I think it needs to be mentioned. You know, it, it's pretty amazing. Like you said, being an active military man, you you paid some price uh, with your body. You're continuing to to have some aches and pains throughout life. And we need to make sure that we we do thank people and our, our service men and women and our veterans for uh, the, you know, the sacrifices that they've made. Some people made the ultimate sacrifice and we're glad that you didn't. And we're glad that you get to go to your buddy's wedding and that he didn't. That's right. Absolutely. So okay, thank, brother. Thank them all. <laughs> anything else to, anything else to throw out there? We're, we're going to tease everybody again, um, with boogie nights, some of the interior products, the consoles, the door panels, the options will be out there and it's going to be later on this year. Yep. Absolutely. And just, uh, I appreciate your time running in this, like just having me on here. You know, I love you and I love your energy and this has been a blast. I love this. Let's get hey, well, Anytime we have interior talk, we might, we'll just have him back on. So we'll, we'll do some interior talk and we'll, we'll dive into it. But right now I think it's, it's important. You know, you're going to have your, you got a big show coming up. You're, you're, you're kind of getting, you know, established there in salt lake and uh it's gonna be a good thing do you feel like you're done moving you've moved around oh oh my god if my wife stops moving i'll stop moving trust me this doesn't involve me this is all my wife so but being a doctor and and wanting to advance in your career and things like that like i get it and i understand it and thank god that i've made a name enough for myself that people still bring me work and i appreciate Mm -hmm. that for everybody out there and uh and kind of you know being patient during the move time and it's just it's a lot and sometimes i'm just like damn why couldn't we just stay in one place so life is life is full of uh, exciting changes i think you said it happy wife happy life damn right yeah. <laughs> damn son damn son yeah. all right phil cato cato's custom upholstery thanks for your time brother yeah absolutely thank you brother i told you he's not shy it was fun i think we're gonna have to continue to have him on he, uh, he tells it like it is. So pretty fun hanging out with Phil Cato. Again, have a great weekend for everybody headed up to the C10 Nationals. And as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. There is some merch left, so if you want to get online, I do have the new C10 Talking shirt, which is kind of my trucking tribute. Uh, I have those, I think they're $24.99, but C10 Talking shirt, pretty cool shirt. They do run just a tad small. They're the comfort fit. You know, they're going to snug your arms a little bit. I like it. It's probably one of my favorite shirts because I dig the colors. I dig the retro vibe. I put that shirt together. It's a water print. It's super soft, super light. C10 Talking. You can get online at either C10Talk.com or TruckTalkMedia.com. Check it out. All right, guys. Again, have a great week. Late.